All right. So in the last video, we looked at radius and interval of convergence. Next thing we want to look at is derivatives and antiderivatives. So this theorem comes in three parts. First part. So in all of these, we're defining a function as a power series, right? The point is that x in a power series is variable, right? Finding the interval of convergence gives us the domain for the function. So we've got a function with a domain. Now we can start talking about things like limits, continuity, derivatives, antiderivatives. So the first one says that this function f is continuous and differentiable on maybe not the whole interval of convergence because we're not going to say anything about endpoints, which may or may not be included in the interval, um, but certainly on the open interval, right? From C minus R to C plus R, okay? Well, the second part, if it's differentiable, then it must have a derivative. What's F prime of X look like? Well, F prime of X will be the sum and going from 1 to infinity of n times a n times x minus c to the n minus 1, right? So what is that really saying? That's just saying that you can differentiate term by term, right? What it's really saying is that if you had, you know, f of x looks like constant term, a1 times x minus c, a2 times x minus c squared, a3 times x minus c cubed, and so on, and you want to get f prime of x. Well, it's saying that you take the derivative exactly the same way you take the derivative of a polynomial, term by term, using the power rule, right? Derivative of a constant is zero. Probably don't even need to write it, right? Here we just get a1, okay? Derivative of x is just one. Then here, power rule says we're gonna get two, two times a2 times x minus c, right? Three times a3, x minus c, sorry, squared. And so on. Okay, that's all it's saying. Also, uh, also worth pointing out is that the radius of convergence is still r. Okay, so taking the derivative does not change the radius of convergence. Could be good to know. Right. Again, maybe we lose an endpoint, but we're not talking about the endpoints here. We're, we're looking at the radius of convergence and the open interval, right? Um, differentiability at endpoints is always kind of a tricky thing, so we, we're not worrying about it here. Um, notice the sum now starts at 1, right? I mean, you can start it at 0, but then you just have a 0 here, right? It's n equals 0, that term doesn't show up, so you might as well start the sum at 1. Um, if you want to... It's worth pointing out, one of the things that you often need to be able to do to compare power series is re-index, right? If you want to compare two power series, well, then you probably want the index to start at the same point. You probably want, you know, the powers to be the same. Here we've got n minus 1. Um, so one of the things that you could do is say, well, what if I wanted to, what if I wanted to write this starting at 0, okay? Well, so... If this was kind of my n equals 0 term, 1 term, 2 term, and so on, right? So shifting the index down. So rather than doing 1, 2, 3, right, and that power is always 1 less. So now we notice that, well, this, this number is always 1 more, 1 more, right? 1 more, 1 more. The power matches. So we can actually do this as n plus 1 a n plus 1, x minus c to the m. So we could also write it like that. Um, that's 
equivalent, right? So basically the idea is if you drop, if you drop the starting point by one, right, then you need a corresponding increase in the index within the formula, right? You drop it here, you increase it there, things balance out. So you can always do that if you want. Okay, third one, we can also do antiderivatives, right? Do derivatives. It's continuous. We know that we can take the antiderivative of any continuous function. So the indefinite integral will be, well, possibly some constant of integration. We'll stick that out front. And this time we're going to integrate term by term, right? So if we wanted to, so we thought about doing an antiderivative, right? Well, that's sort of, you know, so we're doing something like this, right? Integrate term by term. Essentially, this is what the theorem is going to tell us, is that we can do the, the integral of a naught plus the integral of a1 x minus c, integral of a2 x minus c squared. And so, of course, that's going to be a naught times x, a1 over 2 x minus c squared, a2 over 3, x minus c cubed, and so on, right? Again, just using power rule for integration. So what that looks like is it looks like a n over n plus 1 x minus c to the n plus 1, right? We're just doing that 1 over n plus 1, right? Add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, like usual for the power rule, okay? So this is one reason why we like power series. Derivatives, antiderivatives, easy. All you need is the power rule, and we're all pretty good at the power rule.